or if this is your first time here, welcome, welcome. Today I'm going to be putting together the large oversized numbers for a balloon mosaic. You've probably seen these before. They have the giant uh, numbers or letters which are like three feet, four feet, five feet tall, sometimes even six feet tall. So today I'm going to be doing a four foot tall number three and a number zero for my sister's 30th birthday. She knows that me and my sister are decorating but she doesn't know what decorations that we are going to be doing and she's also going to be editing this video so <laughs> hello you get to see the whole process of what I did for your um, balloon mosaic. Anyway so <laughs> So I'm going to be putting together the balloon mosaic numbers. I'm going to be using foam core. I found a template online. It was only like $3 and you got all of the numbers and all of the different sizes. And I'll definitely link that down in the description so that you can purchase the same template. It should make the process very seamless. I've never actually put this together before, so it should be a fun learning experience. It looks simple enough, so we'll see. Another thing that I'm doing a little bit different is I'm going to be using black foam core as opposed to the white foam core that a lot of people typically use. The black foam core it kind of just fits a little bit better into the color palette that we're going to be doing. So that's why I decided to do black. It's the 20 by 30 size and I'll also put all the different sizes I use in any types of materials that I use. But anyway, without further ado, let's jump into it. So the first thing I did is laid out the number template because I hadn't yet bought the foam core and I wasn't exactly sure how many pieces I would need. Um, but since I was kind enough to figure it out for you, um, you only need three pieces of foam core for the four foot numbers if you're doing the 20 by 30 pieces from the Dollar Tree. The next thing that I went ahead and did is tape it on both sides. You don't need a ton of tape because um, when you put the other pieces on, uh, the glue will end up holding it together. But you do want to make sure it's sturdy enough for you to add the accent pieces. So these pages are all numbered, so you can actually print this from a regular 8.5 by 11 printer. Um, and then the pages that come out, they come out in order, plus they're numbered, um, so it's easy for you to lay it out. And then once you do, you only need like a small piece of tape because you're going to end up pulling these up anyway, so you don't want to tape these down super crazy either. And the next thing that I went ahead and did is I used my X-Acto knife to start cutting it out. You want to make sure that um, you put a self-healing cutting mat underneath of here. One, um, it'll dull your blade if you don't for whatever material you're cutting on, and two, you also don't want to ruin the material underneath. So I just ended up going ahead and cutting this freehand. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. Just make sure that you line up the cutting mat as you go along. It's a little time consuming, but it's worth it. Also, when you're cutting this out, your lines don't have to be absolutely perfect because once you put the 3D accent part on, um, it pretty much hides the imperfections. The next thing that I did is I started to use the extra pieces that I had after cutting out the shape of the zero and just kind of measured it to line up with the, um, the part that I was attaching it to. So what I did, since I didn't have a long enough ruler and to make sure my lines were straight, I just went ahead and I marked the foam core in two separate places to show um, the depth. I think I did about six inches. And then after that, I did separate marks of one inch so that I would be able to create the curves. Now keep in mind when you're cutting the one inch sections, you don't want to go all the way through. Obviously you're trying to create a curve, you're not trying to create um, a bunch of separate little pieces. So when you go to score it, just score it lightly enough that it goes through the paper as well as the foam, but not through to the other side. 
By the way, creating these curves is actually so satisfying. It makes like a little click once you pull the pieces, um, once you like score the pieces. The next thing that I did is I got out my hot glue gun and I started to attach the um, larger accent pieces just in small sections. You don't want to put down too much glue at one time because it dries very quickly. I will say that the black definitely shows more pieces of glue than the white does, but for all intents and purposes, for what I was using this for, to me, it wasn't a huge deal. What you see me doing here is kind of just flattening the bottom out a little bit so that it will stand when I actually go to stand the numbers up and place the balloons inside. So all in all, for the number zero, I ended up using four pieces of foam core, including the leftover pieces um, from the initial cutout. Okay, so we have one left, or one number down and one to go. Um, I think that took me roughly about two hours. With the number zero, there's obviously so many curves. So I think what the longest part was, was actually creating the curves of the six inch pieces sticking out going all the way around. So that being said, I'm gonna start on the number three. Also a lot of curves, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. <laughs> um, but now that I've kind of done it uh, one time, I'm hoping that this one won't take me as long. At this point, if you are having issues with cutting, it should be a nice smooth cut. Make sure that you switch your blade out. Um, sometimes if the blade is not sharp enough, it's just gonna make your job that much harder. And it's gonna create ragged cuts that don't look good.
So what you see me doing here is scoring it the opposite way. The piece that I have here is longer than the curve to get around the number three. So initially I measured it so that I could score it and bring it around, but my measurement was off, so I just ended up cutting the whole thing. Boy, oh boy, did I get a lot of glue on myself. <laughs> Make sure when you're doing this to so just take your time. The hot glue is very hot and rushing it is not gonna be pretty. There's also a lot of bending involved. So if you have a large enough surface, I would definitely recommend doing this at more of like a counter height, um, just to save your back. So that is it. Stay tuned for part two. I'm actually going to show you how I use these in the setup for my sister's party. If you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up. If you like me, make sure to subscribe. You can also check out my sister's and I's business page for pack parties and you can see different setups that we've done. All right, until next time. Bye.